الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الأحبة أيها الأحباب May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us and preserve you and bless us with the good of this dunya and protect us from the evil of it meaning this worldly life ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنا وفي الآخرة حسنا وقينا ذاب النار وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الأحباب Ibn Al-Qayyum rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned another very beautiful attribute when he was discussing the, the limits and boundaries of our character. Meaning some of those attributes that we should strive, that we possess innately, at the same time we have to know how to put everything in its proper place. Not to go beyond the bounds and not to belittle those characteristics but rather be in the middle, have those attributes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that, the ability to be angry, uh, angry, uh, uh, to have diligence for things. But we have to have them within the bounds of the sharia. That's what the mu'min is striving to do. And those are the signs of iman. The second attribute uh, Shaykh al-Islam mentioned, rahimahullah ta'ala, is diligence, al uh, He says diligence, it uh, has its limitation which is sufficiency regarding the affairs of this dunya, meaning secular matters, this worldly life, and to obtain what is adequate from it. When this quality falls short of this limit, it is considered humiliation and forfeiture. And whenever it exceeds this boundary, it is considered covetousness and voraciousness of something that is not commendable to be voracious about, or to be excessive about. Ayyu al-Ahbab, Ibn al-Qayyum rahimahullah ta'ala here is talking about diligence in seeking the dunya, in seeking this worldly life. And Allah all throughout the Qur'an belittles the dunya, this worldly life, showing that this, this worldly life is, is, it doesn't really mean anything to our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that we should not uh, indulge excessively in this dunya. Yes, we live here. We enjoy. I, I enjoy the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. And we try to use it to remember Allah. To reflect on the signs of Allah. And to find some of the tranquility in this worldly life. To have us reflect on the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In that case, that is something khair. But if you indulge in this dunya in order just for the gratification of obtaining worldly things, worldly benefits, I've got to have the most beautiful car, my clothes have to all be brand such and such, and I have to have this in and of itself just for the sake of that stuff. We're not saying that you can't have brand clothes or you can't have a nice car or a nice house, no. But it's not to attach your heart to those things. So ayah al-ahbab, it's about being balanced. And using this creation to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reflect upon him to barak wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem wa adhar al-hayat al-dunya wa al-akhirat wa akhira khairun wa abaqa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and he prefers the life of this world. But the akhira, the hereafter, is better and it's lasting. This world is going to, this is all going to go. All of this is going to go. Sometimes we witness things leaving before our eyes. And an example, myself. I came out here in this place. This road that I'm on now was not here. I was unable to get to this section of this mountain before because they destroyed. So those plants and, and trees that they knocked down and the gravel that they put in, the pipes that they put in the ground to let the water flow through, this is new, but it destroyed aspects which more than likely will not return unless they choose not to maintain this road. So it shows us even before our eyes, we witness things. We witness things changing in our, in our lifetime. We witness people, our family members, people we know, people we've heard of, people who are famous who die. They're gone. Their memory will, maintain, will be uh, around for a bit of time. 
but unless they were really someone who left an imprint in this worldly life for others to reflect on, they'll, they won't be remembered after so, so much time. So that status is even something which will not remain. And all the things in this life will disappear. So as Ibn al-Qayyum rahimahullah ta'ala said, having hirs, hirs, uh, the diligence, it has its limitations. And within the bounds of the sharia is that those that you are, you suffice what's in the dunya and not become attached to it. That you, uh, you obtain what's adequate and sufficient for you. But not being excessive in obtaining wealth and obtaining property and this and this and this just for the sake of, of doing those things because all of it's going to go. If you die today, you die tomorrow, someone will have to inherit your property. If you have no siblings, you, you have no uh, children or anything, no progeny, the state in, 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 in the western countries, they obtain your property. So all of that you strove in this life to accumulate is gone to someone you don't even want to have your property and is going to benefit from it. And all you did was strive to accumulate it. So all of your things in this life were is, is like dust in the wind. The other aspect of this that Ibn al-Qayyum mentions, he says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, when this quality falls short of this limit, Meaning that a person doesn't have diligence. They're just those people who become so extreme and say, I don't need anything of this life. Uh, it is considered humiliation. And when we look at it, ayyul ahbab, depending on the society you live in and so forth, most of the people don't look in a, in a, in a, um, hold people in high esteem or in a high status when they have nothing. And especially if they have nothing due to the lack, they they don't have any will. They don't want to work. They don't want to strive for their, their risk, their wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for them. So in this situation, the people look at them as a person who's, uh, who's humiliated, who has nothing. Why? Because they don't have diligence. This is the person I'm talking about, Ayyul Ahbab, not a person who's been struck with poverty as a test or something. But we're talking about those individuals who refuse to go and try to better their situation. They don't look for it. They don't strive to find work. They don't do anything to, to bring food on their table. They just, and they, they have their status, they leave their garments uh, in a, in a they're disheveled, meaning their, their, their garments are wrinkled and they're a wreck. They don't clean themselves, whatever. They go to the, uh, they transgress the bounds by leaving off diligence. It's imperative for us to be balanced and strive to gain something of this life to help us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better, to have with that which is sufficient to take care of ourselves and our families and uh, to help us and assist us in this worldly life. But not to go to the bounds of being extreme and preferring this life to the, to the hereafter and not going and not being careless, so careless that we leave off everything in this worldly life and we live a uh, humiliated existence as Ibn al-Qayyum mentioned and being in a situation where we have uh, just forfeited everything that could be of benefit for us even in helping us to come closer to Allah. And I ask Allah the Almighty to forgive us and bless us with khair and bless us with al-nafi rizqan tayyibah wa amalim wa وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم